Oh wait, is that how it works? Oh, that's much better. Good afternoon. This is my lab safety video. Now, the classroom that I've been interning in for this semester is a very modest one. But, there are several important things that we need to mention when talking about being safe in this classroom. We're going to focus on some of the basics of using a fire extinguisher, a fire blanket, operating a hot plate, and handling glassware. Four things. The most basic thing you can practice for handling glassware safety is to inspect it before use. Obviously, if you have cracks in the glassware and then you do something like heat it up, there could be problems. In our classroom, we haven't really used many chemicals, but boiling water and causing the glass to expand can cause problems if there's cracks in the glass. Nobody wants boiling water in their eyes. Which brings me to my next point. You should never heat something to dryness. The reason being that if there's nothing to conduct heat, then it's just the glass that's going to be expanding and cracks could form. You'll start losing beakers and people can get hurt as well. Simple stuff really. When you're picking up and moving a beaker, be sure that you're doing it in the proper way. Don't pick up a beaker by the rim. The grip is weak, you might drop it and it might break. Pick it up by the side so you can get a firm grip, a wide grip, and you can hold onto it tightly and securely. And there's basic etiquette stuff. Clean your glassware before you put it away. Don't put away wet glassware. Just, you know, be polite. Now talking about glassware isn't a bad segue into talking about hot plates. First thing, if we're talking about heating up glassware on a hot plate, you want to make sure that your glassware is the right size for the hot plate. Just as it's equally important to consider the danger of putting a large beaker on a very small surface hot plate, you should also consider it equally hazardous to put a very small beaker on a very large surface hot plate. The surface of your hot plate should be proportional to the beaker you use. Keep those things in mind. Now another thing, and this is a pet peeve of mine that I developed as a zookeeper, but you should never just unplug something. You should always take the effort to turn it off first. Then we make the effort to unplug it. Ooh! The reason why we do this is to prevent surges, which can hurt the machines. But if there's one thing I was going to tell you that I really hope you came away today about working with hot plates, it's this. You need to have the proper hand protection when taking something off of your hot plate. We can't always be 100% sure that something isn't on and something isn't heated when it's on a hot plate. Regardless of whether or not something's unplugged, whether it's off, you should always use a protective glove to take something off a hot plate. Especially glassware. And also, when you're in a real science classroom and not being silly on YouTube, wear some safety goggles. It's the right thing to do. So unfortunately today, I can't give you an up-close look at our fire extinguisher because it's being checked but I can talk about some of the important things to consider. First of all, the classic CO2 fire extinguisher will actually put out less types of fires than an ammonium phosphate fire extinguisher. Oftentimes, you'll see a fire extinguisher with the letters A, B, and C on it. That is typically an ammonium phosphate fire extinguisher. It puts out all three types of fires. A CO2 fire extinguisher will often put out B and C types of fires. So think about it, when you've evacuated your classroom and there's all kinds of chaos, do you really want to be thinking about whether or not your fire extinguisher can handle the type of fire at hand? No, you want a fire extinguisher that can handle the most type of fires as possible. You just want to grab it and be able to use it properly. And also remember the handy acronym for using a fire extinguisher, PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. Pull the clip, aim your fire extinguisher at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and side to side. Using this motion, you should also always have your butt towards the door, because you don't want to find yourself with a fire in between you and your exit. That's just plain dangerous. And finally today, I want to talk about my personal favorite piece of equipment, the fire blanket. Obviously, the primary use is to aid stop, drop, and roll. But the fire blanket has so many other uses. For example, you have a hazardous spill on the floor of some kind of chemical. The fire blanket can be used to cover that up for the time being. If there's a fire on your lab bench, you can throw the fire blanket over it in order to control the flame. That's what fire blankets are for, controlling the situation. Containment is certainly an important responsibility when considering what you should be doing as a science teacher in a seriously hazardous situation in your lab. The priority should not be to save a lab bench, to save a sink, to save a storage of science materials. The priority should be to get people away. Nothing in the school is worth the loss of a student's or your life. But enough of me talking. Park right there for some of the greatest hits from my internship. One of the experiments you guys are going to do today is going to involve um, 
a straight needle, which is basically a needle that you use to pin the fabric together when you sew. They are sharp. You can hurt yourself with them. You are going to be in trouble if you hurt yourself or someone with them. And it won't affect you very much.